Physics coming to theaters in October. Talk to us a little bit about what Ghetto Physics is. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a classroom scene in the film. You know, I'm playing an instructor, but Ghetto Physics itself is a conversation about power. It's a paradigm, and, and it looks at raw, raw dynamics in the social power game. So, you know, people are not conditioned to talk about what goes on in the shadows. But when we look at politics, economics, theological structures, you have kind of like the formalistic aspects of procedures and policies in the visual dimension you see. And then there's what goes on in the shadows. And that's what ghetto physics deals with, like, you know, what's really going on. Absolutely. And you're the director and the star of the movie in the classroom as the instructor. Why'd you put yourself in the film? Yeah, well, that's an interesting question. I, I think, you know, um, I'm an indie filmmaker, so, you know, I don't have a big studio backing, and I wrote the book. It's an adaptation of a book I wrote. Um, and and the, chap the second chapter of that book was entitled We Create Our Reality from Metaphysics to Ghetto Physics. And so that's where that term was coined in that book I wrote in 03. And um, so, uh, you, you know, just putting together the film idea, how it kind of coagulated, I had a film, a, a book that was doing well, you know, as an indie kind of underground bestseller thing and you know uh, Michael Moore was doing his thing in 04 and uh, the doc genre was starting to expand and stuff like that on the scene and so that's when we started thinking about an adaptation in film and I didn't really have any experience in film but I've done a lot of music production so I understand production scenarios and all that and working with equipment and working with groups and stuff like that and uh, so I started thinking about you know just taking a bite off in the film game and uh, so the, the classroom scene is a device. We're using various devices in the film. You know, it's not just talking heads. We feel like too much of that is going to, people are going to disconnect after a while. So we use, uh, you know, we're interviewing like real pimps on the street, you know, just to get the bitch motivated and get her to the track. You might have to tell a little bit of a lie to the, you can cut to a George Bush or something like that. Then you can cut to an evaluation with the Cornell West or, you know what I'm saying? So you got the intellectuality, you've got the, you know, the, you know, political figures throughout history, Bush, Hitler, Mao, you know, different figures throughout history. And, and then uh, we got that visceral stuff on the street. And then we did a classroom scene and a narrative storyline throughout the film to kind of give it that experience where people could connect with it on that level. So it's a real hybrid type thing going on. And, you know, um, I guess we didn't find as we were doing the pilots, I was I was the one who was playing the role as the, the instructor and stuff like that. And, I was just, you know, operating off a little ho change, you know, doing my guerrilla filmmaking thing. And then when I got the deal in 08, uh, joint production deal with uh, William Arts, who co-wrote, produced, and directed, co-directed the film with me, um, I, I was already playing the figure in the classroom. So we just, we just went on with E. Ray. Awesome. And you touched base on this a little bit before, but you have these complex kind of concepts with metaphysics and politics and worldly affairs, and you liken that to the concept of pimps and hoes. Um, so was that ever complex for you? Uh, I don't know if it was complex for me, but it was it's more, I mean, because that's kind of my lane, you know. Um, the, it's, it's an integral conversation, you know. I call it an urgent synthesis because, you know, life's not happening for me, you know, like where it's political one minute and economic one minute and spiritual one minute. <laughs> it's, it's just happening, life's just happening. So I'm like, you know, there's not a conversation that exists, you know, I think, you know, other than some areas of uh, integral studies and stuff like that. But, you know, where we're dealing with, you know, how do you experience all these realms at once, which is how you experience them in life. So um, that's how it kind of came together for me is, is, you know, I saw, you know, Bush in 03 talking about weapons of mass destruction when I wrote the book and I was like, yeah, you know, He's running the game, you know, there's no, he hasn't shown any weapons, you know, they're going to go in there, seize oil fields and give them, to the, give them to the corporations, stuff like that, you know, and I was like, you know, I feel like I am being talked to, you know, like the hoe and the American public is being addressed, this is the game, but, you know, in an archetypal sense, but, you know, I felt, what really got me is I felt like I was being talked to like a dumb hoe, you know, and so uh, I, I've, I've woven the realms together, I call it creative language code synthesis. Because if you, the brain, the brain is a code sensitive processor of information. So if you talk in somebody's language code, they're not going to be distanced out of it. They're going to connect more. And so, and they're going to be an insider. So if I talk in an um, a, a academic code or corporate or business code and a, a lay person's uh, language code and a street person's language code all at once and synthesize them together, everybody's an insider in the conversation. Nobody's being marginalized. Everybody's validated 
and we can get different perspectives. Great. And in the movie, you talk about everyone played the pimp and every the pimps and hoes analogy. Where did that come from? Uh, the whole thing, you know, is is based off a branch of psychology called archetypal psychology. So, you know, people see, you know, the the political analysis and all that, you know, and the business and economics and stuff like that, and even theologically, you know, um, you see manipulation that goes on, you know. Bishop Eddie Long is all over the place right now, you know what I'm saying, for his pimp game, stuff like that. And, but um, at the core of it, you know, there was this inundation in terminology and hip hop culture. And um, I was studying a branch of psychology called archetypal psychology, and that deals with mythology in the core uh, roles that show up in all mythological stories in everybody's culture king, queen, leader, warrior, trickster, lover hero, villain, all that, you're going to see those roles in all stories. And so I was looking at Pimp and Ho, you know, how there was, you know, this obsession with it in the culture. And I'm saying those terms have archetypal significance, just like king, queen, leader, where those are roles that are woven through us in modern culture and power dynamics. You know, some people are in an archetypal sense, not a literal prostitution on the street, but in an archetypal sense, you know, some people wield power you know, with a greater capacity than others, and some more and more, uh, things are going to be shaped for them, they're going to be directed more. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. And was it ever challenging for you to merge the... the yeah, I mean, you know, it's... it's th those are archetypally, those are roles. So you know, the same thing, you know, with archetypes in general, they're all of them, what I learned from studying it, that all of them are woven through us. You just have a particular resonance with certain ones more than others. That's what the Zodiac is about. You got particular you know, traits and characteristics that you know, resonate in you more than others. And so I think you know, for people to get present with it and how I was dealing and putting forth an archetypal analysis about this is you're gonna be in many situations in life. And in, in some situations, you're gonna be the one putting the game down and shaping the agenda. In other situations, it's gonna go the other way around. You know? A lot of people don't want to identify with the whole, whole archetype because they, you know, they want to stick, stigmatize all hoes and devalue them. <laughs> but you know, the hoe is integral. The hoe is necessary. You know what I'm saying? The hoe has value. <laughs> you know, so um, <clears throat> um, you know, if if you go to the pump and they raise the, the price up a dollar fifty, you know, in a week, what are you gonna do? You're not, you know, you're not bumping any oil out of any oil fields or anything like that. So you got to get down in the game. You're gonna play, you know, that role. Now, you know, whether you can play another role in other aspects of your life, you know, whatever, you're an entrepreneur, you're, you're, you've are you got some leverage and some authority in your social situation, your business situation, you know, that depends on where you're at. But, you know, we're going to play various roles at various times and even with yin and yang, you know, kind of weaving that in. There's a thrusting and a yielding thing and sometimes it's good to be thrusting and other times it's good to yield. Awesome. And you have uh, some talking heads in the film who are adding commentary throughout, which add another dynamic. Who are some of those uh, talking heads that are featured in Metaphysics? Oh, well, the first one I got the interview with was Cornell West. Yeah, and uh, that was kind of cool. It was it was more than kind of cool, right? Uh, because um, you know I think he's one of the most brilliant minds on the planet, and uh, you know so I went after him because I was saying you know even my thesis you know when the smoke clears you know. Somebody be scratching their head and somebody would be saying game down. That's generally the way it goes in the power game in different arenas, you know. You know, can you can you wield in that domain? And 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 I was putting forth that the most evolved agenda is gonna prevail as we go forward. And so I went after the most evolved minds I could get. And uh, a couple of first two I hit were Cornell West, and then once I got the interview with him, I was able to get uh shortly after that I was able to get KRS one, who I think is you know probably you know, arguably, arguably the most brilliant mind hip-hop has ever produced. 